Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Intel just released their 12th generation of processors and inside over there is the i9-12900K. I'll show you in a moment. What we're going to be doing in this video is having a look how good this is in Premiere Pro. Have a look at some timeline performance, some new codecs are there, also going to try color grading and effects. So without no further ado, let's jump right in. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty free license, which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily, so you'll never run out of choice. There's one affordable annual subscription cost with no hidden fees. And the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below, you'll get two months for free. So check out Artlist list in the video description below. Before we're going to get started, there's a few important things that you need to know. Important for you to know is what is the test bench setup. So I'm going to leave everything linked below, but one of the main components that you need to know, obviously, you know, the CPU, we are using a DDR4 setup over here. We're using the Asus Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi board. And for the RAM, we're using the Kingston Fury Renegade RGB Fury. So this is 3600 megahertz, CL16, 64 gigabytes, two sticks over there. Also to eliminate any other bottlenecks, we are using an Asus Tough RTX 3090. And the SSDs we're using are the super fast FireCuda 530 from Seagate. If you want to check them out, they are linked below. Any other parts on this test setup, I'm going to leave linked below. If you haven't seen the 12900K review, go check that out because there's a lot of new things and new things how the processor works. Third of all, if you want to see the DDR5 version of this, what we're going to be doing, then hit that subscribe button. We're going to do that as well to use this awesome Asus ProArt Z690 board with DDR5 coming right up. Stay tuned for that. And last of all, in the end of the video, you're going to be seeing like how much did this process actually use the power like we're going to be looking at thermals and the power consumption so that will be in the end of the video let's jump right in so our renderer has been selected as the cuda so if it can it's going to use the igpu inside the cpu igpu is turned on as well not off but um you'll see in a moment how these work so there's new codecs over here that we're trying this time as well uh, someone was requesting the R5 H.265 60 frames per second 10 bit 422. We're going to be looking at that as well. Also, all the codecs this time have been tested with the color grade on. So to get a better feel what the actual video editing performance will look like. If you want to request any other codecs and stuff to check out, drop the comment below and we'll make sure that we can make that work. So this is A7S3 8 bit 420. That's hardware accelerated you can see the gpu is playing it back it's interesting that it's not showing here the video decode neither on this gpu it's because these like parts and everything is like in pre you know they haven't been released yet while i'm or when i'm filming this video so the good thing is once they've been released and all the software is made a little bit more hand to hand and they talk to each other a bit better we can expect a little bit of a better performance which is a good side so playing it back it's like no problem don't mind my color grade i just wanted to make sure that you see that there is a color grade on so that is very obvious color grading there's a little bit of tearing that i can see and uh, this was on the 11th gen as well. I think that's just the Intel quick sync uh, kind of bug on Premiere Pro. As you can see, some of the tearing over here, but works really well. So basically, if you have any 4K or 1080p footage from your mirrorless cameras, so any 420 up to 60 frames per second, as you can see, it's gonna go through like butter of this. But I think if you're getting this uh, processor, you might want a little bit of beefier codex as well. So let's have a look at these. So now this is 422 10-bit, which is not hardware accelerated. This is all CPU because it's 422 H.264. And this is only accelerated on the CPU. The like timeline performance is actually pretty, pretty good. Still like 30 frames per second. We're going to press play. It's going to press it. No problem over here. But as you can see, the GPU is not doing anything over here but it's the CPU that plays it back. This over here is not video decoding. It's just using some of the like graphics memory to play this back. But as you can see, it's doing a good job. No problem here. Moving on to 10 bit 422 60 frames per second. So this is H.264 as well. A little bit more frames 
and it's a little bit harder to play back as you can see but this is uh, it's pretty pretty all right like as good as it can get when it comes to maybe the 5950x was a little bit better if you haven't seen that video feel free to check that out on my channel as you can see over here as well the cpu was almost maxed out here a lot of it was maxed out the cpu is playing it back and we're dropping zero frames no problem now this over here is 25 frames per second 10 bit 422 h264 okay but the interesting thing over here is just to show you a comparison between less and more compressed h264 so when you move to this clip over here as you can see the playback is much much smoother but this is si codec from a7s3 and this is much less compressed and as you can see 422 less compressed over here it's playing it back very very easy both of them are 25 frames per second as you can see 4k 25 frames frames per second 10 bit everything is exactly the same except the compression rate so this one is much more compressed codec so to play that back is a little bit harder as you can see the timeline is like choppy and then when it goes to the second clip it's very very smooth very easy but if you want to do video editing on this it's no problem. Now this is the big nutcracker, R5 H.265, 60 frames per second, 10 bit 422, very hard codec to play back. So let's have a look at the timeline performance over here. So full resolution, obviously, and it's, it's choppy. Let's just say, it's very, very choppy. There is no hardware acceleration for this codec in Premiere Pro, but the funny thing is, if you use the same codec in DaVinci Resolve, which we're going to be doing as well. So hit that subscribe if you want to see that. DaVinci Resolve has hardware acceleration, especially with this processor for this codec. So it will be much, much smoother. Just for using R5, you got to see that. So it's not so good. We're going to put this to half the resolution. Let's see what it's like then. I mean, it's a little bit better, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't edit it full full resolution but if we press play it's still gonna play it back zero frames dropped no problem let's have a look over here as you can see cpu 100 percent maxed out this is insane look it's only 4k 60 frames per second but just because it's hazel 265 and 422 it's it just takes everything from this cpu to play this back as you can see like the gpus both of them are just kind of taking a break there no problem or nothing Doing nothing over there, but the CPU is 100% utilized. This is red 4K RAW now, uh, with the color grade as well. And, oh, this is just super smooth, super smooth. Like, no problem over here. I think if you're editing red, it's no problem. This is Canon C200 4K. And the timeline is okay, but there is still a lot of tearing. A lot of like, yeah, just not as, as smooth, but like the timeline works, works very smoothly. So if you press play as well, let's see if it's going to play it back. Oh, it looks a bit choppy, actually. I know it says zero frames dropped, but that on the screen over there, let me see if you can see that as well. Yeah, there's some tearing over there. So that's... Uh, that's not very good. Um, not so good over here. And I think this is the Intel QuickSync fault because I've seen it with the Intel QuickSync before as well. And it's the same on even quarter of a resolution. So it's just the render quality rather than the um, actual resolution of it. Let's move on to 5K. This is 5K Red Raw. Let's press play, see what happens. Okay. Wow. Okay, I did not expect that. The CPU is 100% utilized. That's interesting. It drops zero frames, full resolution, 5K, but it takes all of what the CPU has to offer to play this back. 6K, full resolution, first of all, timeline performance. Very good. I've seen smoother, but it's very, very good. Let's press play, see what happens. It took a little bit of time to get going this time. And let's have a look at this face. Let's have a look if it is... See? Yeah, it's dropping frames. It doesn't quite... Look at that. 81 frames dropped. Wow. It's seriously dropping frames over here. So the CPU is like 100% utilized. The CPU is the bottleneck over here. 
That's very, very interesting. Even much, much lower CPUs from AMD can play this back. So it's, it's interesting. For example, the 12 core 5900X processor can play this back no problem. But this one over here has like extra cores, extra everything, extra power, but can't do that. It's just, be just because of the utilization. So this is a B raw now, Blackmagic raw. Looks like no problem, very smooth timeline, a lot of frames being produced over here. Two B-roll clips on top of each other, 6K clips, no problem. Three 6K clips on top of each other with a color grade, and we see no problem over here. Let's just press play over here, see what it can do. Okay, two B-roll clips on top of each other with color grade, seems like it's no problem. Three B-roll clips on top of each other with the color grade. Okay, and it's dropping frames. That's very interesting. I am not sure what the bottleneck over here is. It's just the utilization of the CPU. If you take the color grade off, it's still dropping frames. That is very, very interesting. Because if we looked at the 11900K, which is only eight core CPU, this was playing this back like no problem. But this over here is struggling. This is Canon R5. 8k raw okay this is ridiculous another nutcracker the playback let's just hit play let's see what happens let's go over here as well cpu 100 percent absolutely ridiculous look at the memory as well we're using 44 gigabytes of ram that's uh that's quite a lot 45 45.5 47 for and as you can see full resolution uh, no way Jose this is working half the resolution Let's have a look at the timeline performance now. It's not too bad actually half the resolution clicking around Okay, it a little bit lags waits and then comes Click wait come click wait. There we go click wait. There we go But like scrubbing around not bad when you press play half the resolution It's still dropping frames if we would quarter of the resolution Now bear in mind the Lumetri color, color grade is actually accelerated through the GPU. So that part of the effect should be off the CPU load and on the GPU. So it really shows you yeah, like the actual CPU playback performance. And to be honest, you're not going to see a massive difference if you go with 3070 or lower graphics cards because they still have a lot of power to, to play this back. Not full resolution for the R5 8K go for a quarter of a resolution then you can you can edit it let's have a look at red 8k raw now let's press play and see how it's gonna do cpu 100 percent there we go now gpu is a little bit more utilized because we're using the dedicated memory to play back this big massive chunks of files and we're dropping a few frames okay one frame that means you know can be a margin of error no problem over here but plays back with a color grade Looks like that's uh, no problem. Full resolution 8K, it's insane. So let's try the timeline performance. It's a little bit of tearing, a little bit of like lagging over here. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better now, the first clip. And the face, yeah, seems pretty, pretty smooth now. But as you can see, we are using like 47 gigabytes as well. So 8K editing on this can be done. Feels very, very snappy, especially if we are like you know scrolling around the timeline so if you're doing this 8k editing maybe from your red cameras no problem so this is 12k b round r and this is ridiculous resolution because each frame is about 85 megapixels 24 frames per second black magic raw with the color grade let's put it to full resolution and press play let's see what happens Okay, full resolution, we're struggling a bit. Let's see what the bottleneck is. It is the CPU. It's definitely the CPU. CPU is all maxed out, 100%. It can't play that back. And even if we take the color grade off, let's see if this is, is any different. Pressing play, CPU is still 100% utilized and it can't play that back. So this is half the resolution, color grade back on, pressing play. There we go. Okay, dropping a little bit of frames. Few frames here and there. It's still dropping frames even at half the resolution. CPU is not 100% utilized, but we're dropping some frames. 
So if you're doing 12K editing, I recommend you go a quarter of the resolution because then even with the resol like uh, color grade, no problem. So I've closed the project now and let's have a look at like how did our hardware react over here. You can see the voltage over here, you know, it's all right what it usually sees. The biggest thing what we want to see is the powers and temperatures. Now the peak temperature that we hit was 81C over here, which is a little bit toasty for me because this is open air test bench. We have a pretty good uh, AIO over here and we're still hitting 81C. And as you can see, it's because we have pulled 217 watts from the socket, which is quite, quite, quite crazy. And last of all over here, this is what you can see how these, this big and small cores, how they work. Look, half the cores are like up to the core seven over here, zero, like eight of the cores have reached like 5.1 and 5.2 gigahertz as you can see and then these lower ones like from 8 to 15 or 16 actually these are 3.9 gigahertz so you can see that the smaller cores work at a slower frequency and the bigger cores work faster so the conclusion over here for windows 10 is that if you're doing any 4k 6k editing it should be fine now it's not 100 percent like well worked out all the wrinkles and like for windows 10 to utilize uh, this cpu now i recommend you jump to the windows 11 if you want to see the playback for that uh, you know stay tuned it's going to come out very very soon but if you want to use your current system and maybe you're upgrading this then it's not particularly good i would say that the 5950x timeline performance was actually better than this 12900k but regardless this is the best that i have seen on intel so if you want like the best that intel can offer there we go the also good thing about this is that the igpu actually helps with a lot of the codecs uh, when we use like some of the mirrorless cameras and things like that, which is very very cool So if you have any other comments or suggestions leave them linked below if you want to see any of the videos or any Way you'd like to see this hardware utilized or showcase to you Let me know in the comments below likes if you enjoyed it soups if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in the next one Thanks guys for watching. See you soon